So what we have here is the iPhone 15 Pro, which is capable of 48 megapixel photos. And the other is the Sony ZV-E10, which is capable of 24 megapixel photos. Both around the same price point. The question is, does the iPhone produce better quality images because it has a higher megapixel count? Well, in this video, we'll be taking a look at some photo and video comparisons and see if we can tell the difference between the two. And spoiler, it's not just about the megapixels that matter in a camera. We'll also talk about which one you might prefer for your needs, whether you're a hobbyist photographer, videographer, or content creator. Now, just to set the scene, you probably know the iPhone 15 Pro has a starting price of $1,000. And depending on what kind of storage you get, and if you go with the Pro Max, you can easily go beyond that $1,000 price tag. This particular Sony camera, the Sony ZV-E10 with interchangeable lenses, is around a $1,000 mark. The body itself can range from $500 to $600. There have been a few discounts now and then, depending on where you look. And this particular lens, the Sigma 18 to 50, 2.8 lens, which retails around for $500. You can get cheaper or more expensive lenses, but I think this is the best all round bang for your buck lens. So if we take a look at some sample photos taken, see if you can tell which one is from the 48 megapixel iPhone and which one is from the Sony 24 megapixel camera. Now these, by the way, are unedited raw photos taken from both cameras. So now that the iPhone 15 Pro offers Apple ProRes recording after a touch of color grading, I think it's even more difficult to tell which has been taken with the Sony and which is from the iPhone. The only color grading I applied to the iPhone footage was setting the camera LUT in Final Cut Pro to Apple Log and then adding a few minor touches with color correction, nothing too dramatic. Now Sony doesn't have Apple ProRes Log recording, so it's not a direct side-by-side -side comparison, but it does have embedded picture profiles to give that camera a certain look. I'm using Cine 1 or Cine 2 picture profiles and I find it gives you a pretty decent image straight out of the camera and you don't have to do too much in color grading. You'll probably hear a lot of YouTubers talk about S-Log3, which is Sony's equivalent to capturing more dynamic range, and it's available under Sony ZV-10. It does require a tad more work when it comes to color grading though. I find using Cine 1 or Cine 2 makes life so much easier. I highly recommend it if you get a chance to use it. But aside from that, even though the iPhone has 48 megapixels and the Sony has 24 megapixels, it's very difficult to tell the difference between the two, in my view anyway. And a short disclaimer, I did have to use an ND filter on the Sigma lens just so I can shoot 24 frames per second in sunny or bright conditions. So even though the Sony has half as many pixels compared to the iPhone, I don't think the pictures are half that bad. In fact, some cases, I think the images from the Sony are just as good, if not better than the iPhone. So what's it all about then? Well, it's related to sensor size. Sony has a much larger sensor when compared to the iPhone. This is because even though the Sony has a lower megapixel count, it does have a larger sensor. This means each pixel on the sensor can capture more light. More light means better image quality. Whereas the iPhone sensor is smaller, which means its pixels are smaller and more compact and can't gather as much light, even though it has a higher megapixel count. One way to think of it is imagine you have a garden full of flowers, the garden being the sensor and the flower representing a pixel. 
If the garden is very small and compact, but has a lot of flowers, the pixels, each flower is going to be limited to the amount of light it can capture, whereas the larger garden with just the right amount of flowers will have more space to capture light, and the result is you get pretty good images. I should also mention that the iPhone does have a quad Bayer sensor which uses pixel binning to help capture better images. The short version is that it can combine four pixels into one, allowing it to capture more light. There's a really good video from Android Authority which explains pixel binning in just over five minutes. If you want to find out more, I'll leave a link down below. So the takeaway here is even though a camera is advertised as having more megapixels, it's always good to take into consideration the size of the sensor because it's not just the number of pixels in a camera. So $1,000, I think you get pretty stunning images from both cameras, especially when it comes to video footage with Apple ProRes. You may have seen that Apple event where it was recorded with the iPhone 15 Pro. I had no idea it was recording the iPhone 15 and I'm pretty sure not many knew either at the time. I don't think you can go wrong with either of these. The iPhone is super simple and easy to use camera. The Sony, as with all mirrorless cameras, they require a bit of finesse in dialing the right settings to take good photos and video. And each have their advantages and disadvantages. I think if you want a simple solution and you're after portability, the iPhone, in my opinion, wins, whether you're a casual photographer or content creator. And with the added USB-C, you can attach other accessories like an SSD or a microphone. Whereas the Sony ZV-E10, the advantage is the lenses are interchangeable. You have a flip out screen. It's rather bulky in comparison to the iPhone, but in terms of camera size in this category, this is a pretty small camera. You can sort of think of the iPhone as your all day Swiss army knife, an all in one simple solution. You can take a wide variety of photos and video with very little effort. It's a pocketable computer, all in a slim, compact, very easy to use, battery hungry device. Whereas the Sony, it's like your dedicated pro machinery tool, that multi-purpose screwdriver or drill, if we're keeping to the analogy thing. It does one thing and one thing only, and you can swap out different lenses, batteries, and SD cards, but it does have that slight learning curve to get good video and photo results. But once you master the basic settings, you can get really stunning images with the camera. If you're just starting out in photos and video, the iPhone is a great start. Plus, you get a phone as well. Then once you find yourself wanting a bit more from the iPhone, then this is probably a natural progression to get something like the Sony. Let me know what you think. Would you prefer the iPhone 15 Pro, the all-in-one Swiss Army knife, or a dedicated mirrorless camera like the Sony ZV-E10? All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.